Hey y'all, check this out. This is not Battlefield 6. This is not a video game. Eagle Eye is Andrew's AI helmet that aims to put a digital teammate on every soldier. Picture a platoon leader looking through a visor and seeing friendly positions, drone video, a firing solution, and a suggested route that avoids Russian loitering munitions. No fumbling with a tablet, no shouting over a radio, just a quiet overlay like a combat HUD out of a video game, except it works in the rain, at night, and under fire. That is the pitch behind Anderil's Eagle Eye family. They plan to hand roughly 100 units to the U.S. Army next year. Palmer Lucky calls it an extremely powerful capability. He also says the price will fall, and he thinks he solved the nausea problem that haunted earlier attempts. If he's right, the grunt gets an AI co-pilot that never blinks. Hey friends, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran, law grad, and serial abuser of coffee. We have covered shiny tech that dies the first time it meets mud, cold, or Russian artillery. But this is different. Eagle Eye sits on the head, not on a pedestal. If it fails, a real person pays. So we're going to hold it to the only standard that matters. It doesn't make a soldier faster, harder to kill, and easier to coordinate without making him puke. Quick history. The Army chased this idea for years. Microsoft's IVAS IVAS, tried first comfort, latency, and what soldiers diplomatically called mission-affecting physical impairments killed it. Spring of 2025, the Army rewrote the program as the soldier-born mission command and then opened the architecture to any company that wanted to compete. Well, Anderil landed the software contract. Eagle Eye is a family not a single toy. Glasses for maintainers and warehouse crews, helmet-integrated ballistic AR eyewear for mass-fielding infantry, a sealed rifle-rated full-face helmet for blast and frag protection in night-focused ops. Andrew is working with Oakley, Ops Corps, Gentex, and others, so frames feel like gear, not a science project. Reportedly, components share 90% commonality. Compute modules and vision sensors are the same with mission-specific add-ons like thermal or range packages clipping on as needed. The trick is weight and balance. Processing and batteries ride the helmet, not the bridge of your nose, so the face feels light. Sensors align with the head's center of gravity. If you have done a 12-hour patrol with a heavy mount, you know why that matters. Under the hood, Lattice ties it all together. Lattice is Anderil's mesh and mission command AI platform. It pushes and pulls data from drones, from ground sensors, from radios, and other wearables without relying on a single hub. That matters when jammers wake up and satellites go quiet. Lattice already runs on 100 plus sensor types and has Pentagon backing to expand in contested environments. Eagle Eye, is the human interface to that network. Less goggles, more window into the tactical interface. Now, Lucky is blunt about Microsoft's IVAS program. He thought the original architecture wouldn't work. He says, Eagle Eye tackles latency and reprojection errors and calibration mismatches and the eye-inner-ear disagreement that triggers cyber sickness. And he has pedigree here. He built the original Oculus as a teenager, sold it, then spent years building defense systems that ship. That history buys him credibility here. Use cases matter. Start with ballistic AR glasses that integrate with a standard helmet. The lenses stay clear and impact rated. Compute rides high so the face stays light. Anduril thinks this variant can scale to hundreds or thousands of units. It overlays friendly routes, target cues, and sensor feeds. It talks to handhelds, rifle optics, and drones. It's designed for long wear, training to combat day or night. This is really a more immersive display for tunnel clearing, for gun trucks, for EOD. There is a glasses only path for non-combat users. Aircraft maintainers can pull up a remote expert guidance. Do you know how many TOs or technical manuals we used to have to lug out to the flight line to fix this beast right here? Imagine being able to pull up expert guidance from Boeing to solve a problem on the E3 Sentry. Warehouse crews can inventory with computer vision. Firefighters and first responders are in the conversation as well. DHS customers are already talking to Andrew. Cross-market volume pushes prices down, which is how tens of thousands of dollars per unit becomes low thousands over time. 
some prototypes integrate with Army rifles and support ballistic computation. That accounts for shooter motion, target motion, wind, and Coriolis effect. If that works reliably, a private with solid rifle fundamentals suddenly becomes far more dangerous marksman under stress. Crews can share a look-to-lock language across dismounts, vehicles, and small drones. You point, you confirm, and you prosecute. Less radio chatter, less time wasted, fewer blue-on-blue -blue risks. Now, Meta and Qualcomm and others feed into this supply chain. Meta's waveguides and display tech matter here. Meta says the display supply chain is independent of China. If you put glass on half a million heads, you cannot be one embargo away from a parts crisis. Andrew's public goal is roughly half the IVAS unit price that the Army once expected. Now that matters if the Army wants thousands, not hundreds. Comfort beats features every time. If a system gives headaches, soldiers will forget to bring it. Eagle Eye distributes weight around the helmet, not the face. Glass can be clear, ballistic, and light. If latency is the dragon, Andrew says they have it tamed. If a squad can wear the glasses from staging to exfil without ripping them off, that's a win condition. If not, it joins the pile of expensive kit that just rides in the rucksack until the colonel shows up. Nothing works forever in a jammed fight either. Russia floods the air with noise, spoofs GPS, and hunts emitters. An eagle eye headset with no network is still heavy glasses. This is why the lattice mesh AI architecture matters. It routes around outages, it pushes enough data at the edge, and it does not rely on a single tower that the Russians have already jammed. The headset can be a node, not just a consumer relaying short-range updates between all the other soldiers' headsets when the big pipes are cut. Lose the cloud, keep the squad net. Lose the net, keep the last cached map and the optic. Keep fighting. Give Ukrainian assault groups rugged, balanced glasses with fused drone feeds and fast deconfliction, and you cut fratricide and speed up combined arms at the company level. Put Eagle Eye on a Pacific Infantry Battalion moving by small boat and rotorcraft, and you get quiet navigation overlays and low probability comms that don't give away positions. Why not give it to Ukraine to test? They will let you know real fast whether it's solid or a solid piece of junk. Now, Lucky is not shy. He says he is the best head-mounted system designer in the world. He might be right. After all, this is the guy who invented modern virtual reality. But he also might be setting expectations no one can meet. The truth will be in after-action reports. I will give him this. The team is moving fast. The design language looks like gear, and the company already ships systems that live at the edge. The reunion with Meta is icing on a messy cake. Strange bedfellows are how hard problems get solved. Even though Meta fired Palmer Lucky, Palmer Lucky is now partnering with Meta to make these glasses a reality. Strange bedfellows are how hard problems get solved. So here's what to watch next. One, soldier wear time. If line units keep the glasses on for hours, not minutes, eagle eye is real. Two, integration with weapons and vehicles. If a gunner, a drone pilot, and a team leader can share a target in two taps and a head nod, friction drops. Three, price and logistics. If the army can buy thousands without starving other programs and if broken lenses swap like Peltors, adoption sticks. Eagle Eye looks like the first serious attempt to put AI comms and a combat HUD on the same human machine and make it something you forget you're wearing. If it shifts on time, if it works under jamming, and if it keeps stomachs calm, the platoon fight changes. Less yelling, fewer fat-fingered grids, more shared truth. I am cautiously optimistic. That is my veteran's way of saying I'll believe it when a private tells me it helped him get off the X a second faster. If you want more sharp, field honest looks at tech that claims to save lives, subscribe and stick around. I will keep testing claims, poking holes, and giving credit where credit is earned. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.